from WNDU-TV, this is 16 News Now. We start with a live look tonight at Notre Dame Stadium, where in a surprisingly close and low-scoring game, you just saw the Fighting Irish do just enough to beat Louisville 12-7. The number four Irish are now 4-0 and oh in their 22nd straight win in the house that Rockne built. Good evening and welcome to 16 News Now. I'm Maria Catanzari. We have team coverage for you tonight of the Irish win. Mark School Jr. is standing by at the stadium. Megan Smedley is here with the one member of the Irish who still stood out today. But let's start with Chuck Freebie with how it all played out. Chuck. Maria, Louisville entered this game at the stadium with the reputation of being a team that makes tons of turnovers and plays terrible defense. And Irish fans wish that Louisville team had actually shown up. It was a very breezy day at the stadium, but the wind did not bother. The Irish kicker Jonathan Doerr, who nails two first quarter field goals from 32 and 30, putting the Irish up 6-0. Most exciting play of the first half was contributed by freshman tight end Michael Mayer who looks like a track hurdler on this play, taking the ball down to the 13, but Brian Kelly goes with the fake field goal. Jay Bramblick comes nowhere close to the first down. The Irish lead 6-0 at the half. Louisville starts the second half with a time-consuming drive, kept alive by Malik Cunningham's fourth down option run near midfield. Then Cunningham with a one-yard touchdown pass to Marshawn Ford, and the Cardinals have the small crowd stunned with a lead at 7-6. Now the Irish answer with a touchdown of their own. On third and nine, Ian Book doesn't see the open Michael Mayer, so instead he scrambles and the little hesitation move gets him to the end zone. 12-7 Notre Dame. It's still a five-point game when the Irish get the ball with nearly eight minutes left, but Book makes a couple key third down conversions and Kyron Williams makes this big run on his way to 127 yards. The Irish hang on for a very ugly 12-7 win over Louisville. Brian Kelly is meeting with the media inside Notre Dame Stadium. And it's our 22nd consecutive win at home. I don't want our guys to uh, lose sight of that. Um, and, and that's a great achievement. Uh, I don't think the book is lost at home. And a lot of those guys don't know what it's like to lose at home. And I want them to keep that. So with that, we'll uh, let you move on to questions. All right. Our first question is from Eric Hansen. Brian, there were some big third down conversions in that last drive and Ian had a terrific scramble into the end zone, but how would you evaluate his game overall today? I think you evaluate again based upon, um, you know, the, the body of work and, and certainly there are things that he can get better at, but look, he wins and I, I get asked the same question each, each and every week. Um, you know, he's, he's, he's a winner. He wins football games. I said, he hasn't lost at home. Uh, and I thought when, when it's, when it's time to make plays, he made huge third down conversions on this last drive. So when the game's on, on the line, you can count on Ian book, uh, to come up and make big plays for us. And, um, that's a good feeling to have. And we'll go next to Pete Sampson. Brian, I think uh, you weren't even off the field when NBC asked you sort of about the vibe and you talked about, hey, winning's hard. Did you sort of get the sense on the sideline this is going to have to be a post game where you're like reminded the team that essentially winning is hard, that you should feel good about winning, even if it aesthetically didn't look great all the time? Yeah, and I, you know, I don't even know if it aesthetically looked bad. Um, you know, we just you know, we controlled the line of scrimmage. We controlled the time of possession. We had, I think, one or two penalties. We didn't turn the football over. I've coached a lot of games, you know, over 30 years. I don't know that I've been in one quite like this. I've been in a 12-7 game when it was, a, you know, a stinker, you know, and, and you're like, Ugh. but this game was a little different. It was, um, it was hard fought. It was, uh, you know, again, from our perspective, it was the the inability to cash in 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 the red zone, and then a couple of, you know, a couple of plays that we need to make, right? You know, we got we got to make a catch in the end zone. We got to you know make a a, a third down stop, um, and and that's that's kind of the difference in this ball game. Or you know, it 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 looks a little bit different at the end. So. 
uh, I just reminded them was the preparation was outstanding. Their mindset was was great. But, you know, when you're a top five team in the country, you're going to get the opposition's best game, period. And that was not a one and three football team we played today. That was that was a team that played their absolute best, took care of the football. They were minus eight coming into the game and uh, they did not turn the football over. So, um, you know, hats off to, to Louisville. Just to elaborate on a couple points Brian Kelly just made, it's rare that you see a 12-7 game in college football these days. It's extremely rare that you see one with no turnovers, and that's what we saw today. Also, the 12 points by Notre Dame to win the game, that is the lowest home point total to win a game for Notre Dame since 1978. So it's a surprising game in so many ways today for the Irish especially true when Notre Dame had the ball. 16 News Now Sports Director Mark Skoll Jr. is in Notre Dame Stadium. No cameras in the press box this year, so he joins us on the phone. And Mark, so much for that powerful offense we talked about on Countdown. Chuck, what a difference a week makes. Last week we were talking about how good the offense looked and how rusty the defense played against Florida State, and it was just the complete opposite this week. Notre Dame offense was still able to move the ball on the ground. Kyrie Williams finished with 127 rushing yards and averaged 5.1 yards a pop. And Chris Tyree had made some noise as well with 32 rushing yards with 4.6 yards per carry. But Ian Book, not as sharp this afternoon, but completed just 11 of 19 passes for 107 yards. That's his lowest amount of passing yards since the Michigan game last year when he only threw for 73 yards in that monsoon up in Ann Arbor. The biggest cause for concern with Book today, though, was he only completed five passes to wide receivers beyond the line of scrimmage. Three of those passes came on only the first drive of the game, and that was to Kevin Austin, Ben Skoranek, and Avery Davis. But Book did make some big passes on the final drive of the game to keep the clock moving and keep the ball out of Malik Cunningham's hands. And I will say the wind inside the stadium, very strong this afternoon, like we personally witnessed during countdown, the kickoff. But Ian Book did say this was the windiest game he's ever played in, and but he just hasn't been able to develop the chemistry I'm sure he would have liked to through four games with his receivers, Chuck. Hey Mark, thank you. It is definitely tough for Irish fans to be happy with what we saw today, with a few exceptions. So did anyone stand out in a game that, quite frankly, was not memorable? That's where we bring in Megan Smedley with today's X Factor pick. This was like the sky on a cloudy night. Not a lot of stars, Megan. Yeah, Chuck, you can say that again. So last week, all of us went 0 for 3 on our X Factors, and today was far from an excellent performance from the Irish. So let's see how our countdown crew did. Mark had defensive standout Jeremiah owosu koromoa The defense did have a better performance today. JOK was all over the place with a nice couple of hits. The Irish were able to hold the Cardinals to under 100 yards on the ground. I had freshman tight end Michael Mayer. He had a big week last week, but not so much today. Just one catch for 12 yards, but he did have an impressive hurdle during that catch, though. Chuck went on to another tight end and one of Book's favorite targets, Tommy Tremble, but he wasn't his favorite target today. Tremble had just one catch for a total of four yards. So, by process of elimination, Kyron Williams showed up today just like he has all year, putting the game away late in the fourth at the 24-yard run. Williams finishes with 127 rushing yards on 25 carries. He continues to be Notre Dame's most reliable offensive weapon. It's his third game this season, rushing for more than 100 yards. Williams' performance today is Notre Dame's fifth consecutive game with a 100-yard rushing performance dating back to the Camping World Bowl. This last time it happened was back in 2017. Now, as I said, Kyron Williams, hands down, the most consistent player for the Irish this season. Maria, I'll send it back to you. All right, Megan, thank you very much. Well, we